I like my whiskey, I like my bourbon, and I like my beer, and I like <clears> to <throat> separate. Welcome to Who's Drinking What? A craft beer podcast where we just sit around, drink beer, and have a good time talking to each other. I'm Peter Hines, your host. Join with me, my drinking partner, Brooke Scott. Welcome back. And we have a special guest this week, Sam Mooney. That's me. How's it going, everyone? Sam uh, used to live down here. He was the man that introduced me to the Tap Beer Bar. Aw, shucks. He's got beer cred, guys. I'm excited to have him on the show. I feel like you're giving me too much credit. I'm going to be a letdown. <laughs> That's all right. I've got games to test you on that. So <laughs> we'll technically have an evaluation of your beer credit. I am keeping my expectations low. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we are recording here at the wonderful Tap Beer Bar in Bloomington, Indiana. It is January 16th. And uh, to start us off at the top, I have a little bit of a big announcement. Ooh. I just oh, yeah. found out this morning that this show is going on the road to Winterfest. Woo! Woo! <laughs> if you guys don't know what this is, it is uh, the Indiana Craft Brewing Guild puts together a, a beer fest called Winterfest, January 31st up in Indianapolis. And we're going to go. We're going to bring the show up there. We're going to get to cover it. Um, I just found out this morning, so I don't have any concrete plans. I don't know if we need any. But uh, it'll be great. I, I'm excited. What do I what do I wear? What do I do? I don't know. <laughs> I'm it's, sure you would do well with a Colts jersey like you got on now. Well, we'll you'll, see you'll if they're going to be playing in the Super Bowl the next yeah. day or not. <laughs> I will actually be volunteering at the Winterfest as well, so I'll probably run into you two. I no clue what I'm doing yet. It could be parking duty. It could be pouring well, beers. It could be you know handing out wristbands. Who knows what I'll be doing? But I wouldn't I get, do well pouring. It sounds beers. like I get free beer though too, as oh. long as I stay responsible and continue to do my volunteer duties. I hope you can I, hide it well. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, to be uh, determined. But you know, free T-shirt and free beer and spend you know eight hours helping out at a beer fest sounds like a plan to me. So. I mean, and if the show goes well, we might have to flag you down, see if you can't take a break, uh, have one of those beers with us, and record it. I'd be happy to. Did you say flag him down? Flag him. Oh, flag okay. Him. Yeah, we'll I'll, be in, I'll be in the same pavilion here. There's uh, no reason to. I was going to. Yeah. We're going to get John Travolta, oh. get a 747, <laughs> fly you from the east end to the west end of the pavilion. You guys have, you know, increased the budget then. Yeah, I was going to say, where's yeah. this money coming yeah. from? <laughs> John Travolta is just a fan of the show. Okay, okay. He's one of the friends of the podcast. That's awesome. <laughs> it's all about who you know. Uh, if you guys want to follow all of our happenings on the podcast, please follow us at Twitter. Is probably the best way. It's at Who's Drinking Wa. Spell the show out. No apostrophe in there. <laughs> Gets me every time. Leave the T off. Yeah. The, <laughs> I made a show name that was a little too long for twits. Why do they... Why do they limit the name length? That, I don't get that. I don't know. You think like that wouldn't be a thing, but yeah. it is. They're going to get enough users where it's going to get long enough that they're going to have to do it. Like with WW2 for the internet. I mean, there's like millions and millions and millions of people yeah. on there. Way too many people. Like, surely they're going to have to. Yeah. But they should all be following our show. <laughs> exactly. <That's> true. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening to us, uh, we're, we're on so many things. Podomatic, iTunes. Hit us with the subscribe there. We're... Uh, we've got the YouTube channel that someday I want to turn into a video podcast. It's a pipe dream at this time, but stay tuned. You never know. It might happen Maybe one day. Later. Yeah. Um, but, guys, we've got our beers ordered. They're in front of us. I won't make us stare at them too long. The suspense is killing me. Yeah. So, um, cheers, mates. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's some smooth drinkability I've got here. Oh. Everything I hoped it could be and more. Yeah. Sam, so. Sam you're, the color on that is just phenomenal. It's incredible. God, that is awesome. Yeah. It's almost orange. It is. <laughs> it's, am I drinking Sunkist or am I drinking Three Floyd's Arctic Panzerwolf? And that is cool. the question. Yes. Well, and Sam, why don't you lead us off with, with what you're drinking there with the description? As I said, it is the Three Floyd's out of Munster, Indiana. The Three Floyd's Arctic Panzerwolf. It's an Imperial IPA and 9% ABV. And it is a massive IPA, massive IPA, that will leave your palate its hapless victim. Ooh, that's... Need I say more? <clears throat> so, no. That's all that needs to be said. And I, I mean, I agree. I mean, it, the hops hit you right up front, and it's, I mean, it's, that's 
that's all you catch on there is really? the hops. I mean, it's but it's it's smooth still too. It's not like overwhelmingly hoppy. I've it had doesn't some where stay it's, on the tongue too long. No, not at all. Because I've had those kinds of beers where it's it's just hopped up to be you know overwhelmingly mm-hmm. hoppy, and it kind of deters from the taste. But this is well balanced. I really like it. Because I've definitely had some of those where it's hard to drink because like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah no, it's I know like what you're talking too about. much did you just put hops and water in here what, <laughs> yeah. did, what did you do here but it's, this is this is excellent i like i said everything i could have hoped for in a three floyds beer. and again I, that color is still so amazing oh. and it's like it's glowing it's not just a nice Wait, orange color you but catch the sunlight coming through the glass on my hand yeah it's <clears throat> that's very nice yeah. this, that'll be my pitch for the youtube channel guys if if you listen to this on other things Maybe just this episode go over because we do take pictures of the beers and put them up there as a slideshow. And I mean, if you're a fan of how beers look, yeah, <laughs> it looks so it good. It does look like a glass it's, of freaking orange soda. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. The more I drink of it, it, it's it's very smooth, and that's that's why I don't. That's what I look for in an IPA. Something that you can come back to time and time again. I was never a big fan of IPAs initially. The hops just didn't do it for me, but yeah. something I, think, I guess you just acquired the taste for, and now it's it's my go-to. <laughs> yeah. Brooks, uh, what are you drinking? I am drinking a th- – no, I'm not. I'm drinking a <laughs> Toe Yard. Who's that? Um, I've never had any beers from Toe Yard before. This is my first one. It is a brown ale. It is a southern English brown ale, to be exact, that includes toffee, nutty, bready, and roasty notes. Do you must think it's say what? Oh, I was gonna ask since it's an English brown, is it at all like Newcastle for for the listeners might be able to a little it. bit? Yeah, that's kind of my initial thought on it. I taste a lot of the toffee. I think is what it is. It's just toffee, nutty, bready. A lot of toffee is actually really good. Um, kind of surprised me. Easy oh, no, drinker. I, oh yeah, definitely. I I haven't really drank that much in the way of brown ales. I guess Newcastle would be the best way to compare it to. That's really all I've ever drank in life brown ale is something that you don't see that many of i guess but <clears throat> starting to see more yeah it's it's a weird category though because um a lot of them i think when you see it brown ales they're usually playing up the the nut part of it um and and i don't usually enjoy that because i feel like it gets a little dry and, and has a funky taste because a lot of the brown ales are more like the kind of the room temperature Correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, I've had, I had a few when I was in England that were kind of that style, and mm-hmm. I, it depends, because some of them are better served, you know, cold like these, and other ones, you know, sometimes the temperature makes a difference, too, taste-wise hmm. and everything else. But, I totally agree. But, Did you say this was a Indianapolis Brewery tow yard? Yes. Fairly uh, new? Within the last couple of years, couple yeah. Couple years. And, I don't think I've had any beers from there. And if my memory serves me, it's within a few blocks of Lucas Oil Stadium, I mean, it's like perfect location you know go there before the game oh, then that'd be awesome that's what i should i went yeah. to the colts bingles playoff game a couple weeks ago i ended up we went to ram brewery you've ever been there yep i've heard of it heard good things that's yeah, the yeah. one by the circle city mall yes yes yeah it's yeah i mean it's just a couple blocks from lucas oil as well yeah man they had some great beer there the past two colts games i've went to we my wife and i have gone there and had a bunch of beers before the game is it's awesome real nice Pete? yep what have you got, Pete? Yeah, yeah, I guess it's my turn, right? I went with uh, the Daredevil Muse, which uh, it is a Belgian golden ale, and it's uh, made with the highest quality uh, Belgian Pilsner malt and Nobles hops for a refreshingly unique balance of inspiration and respect for the classic style. Respect. Yes, and and I really, it is very good. It's a Belgian golden ale. I know sometimes I've seen quadruples, listed that they can sometimes be synonymous uh so it has that taste um it's Very got similar, a higher yeah. alcohol content but it's blended in you wouldn't know it it's one of those beers that can do you in you know yeah you're not could careful get, you could get dangerous yeah yeah before you even know it it's definitely a sweeter fruitier taste you know um they don't really hop the beers uh for most of the belgian styles so i really enjoy it though very good did you guys see a story in the news this week? It was kind of beer related. It was a little tragic. Uh oh. In Africa somewhere, that there was a funeral, and then guests of the funeral afterwards had uh, a locally brewed African beer. And then I think there was over is this 100 a real people story? got sick. This is a real story. Okay. Over 100 people got sick. A bunch of them died, and they think they found 
it was the beer was tainted with crocodile bile. What? <laughs> yeah. Is that poisonous? Apparently. Okay. Extreme. <laughs> poisonous. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the the you know the environment, the the weather, the climate there isn't really conducive to the types of ingredients you need to brew beer. So, I mean, what were they... Do you know what they were brewing the beer out of? You know, uh, well, besides crocodile bile, apparently? <laughs> they had a dead croc out back, and they were like, well... <laughs> we'll see what we can do. My understanding is that it's more of a lager style, and you're right. Um, I, I've i never heard much about the African brewing scene, um, because I think I, you're right. They, they I didn't know there was one. <laughs> I, I think it's usually uh, in the country's like Zimbabwe and Kenya and stuff that had the British influence for imperialization. Hmm. Uh, and sense. you mostly just get loggers. Right, that makes sense. But uh, the, the, it, I think the, the key to it that I read was that the beer wasn't actually brewed with the crocodile bile. Just that, accidentally got in. That, I think, is the thing that's still under investigation, if it was an accident, if it was intentional. Ah. So... Um, yeah, it's. I thought it was interesting, beer related, very tragic, um, and also a little weird. I would never have guessed to use crocodile bile <laughs> as a toxin <laughs> of any. Well, now you know. And how do you get that, by the way? I don't care to find out. I mean, crocodiles are mean. Yeah. Had, w- there's a lot of suspicious circumstances around this. Very weird story. Uh, I was just looking it up on my phone too because I remember, remember, because they don't get a lot of hops and they don't have a lot of, you know, that, the, the grains and everything in mm. Africa. A lot of the things they use, they have substitute ingredients they use. So like for the hops, they use like geisho root instead. And they use huh. a lot of honey in their mm. beers as well. That so makes sense. I don't know if you rec- remember the that bitches brew we had from Dogfish Head yeah. that one night. Mm. It was like it was a, it was a mix. It was like a imperial stout. There were threads of that in it, and then there were threads of this honey geisho beer that is a traditional African beer. Really? Was it good? It was interesting. Yeah. It, it grew on me. <laughs> it, it had a strange aftertaste, which I have to think yeah. was probably the geisho root. Because it was something I've I'm not used to having. It, yeah. So, I mean, once you mentioned that, it kind of clicked in my brain. And I was like, oh, yeah, the, the geisho root and the, the, very, the different ingredients they use in Africa to make their version of beer. I'm just glad our bitches brew didn't have crocodile <laughs> vomit in it yeah <laughs> yeah i do remember that now that was that was a very weird i mean i'm always up for trying something new but i might not go back to that find me in the right mood maybe but yeah. it, it, those big 22 ounce bottles you've, i've got to really be sold on the beer to yeah grab one of those well and that's something i want to bring up one of the reasons i brought you on the show actually sam is you're one of the most adventurous beer buyers i've ever <laughs> been around uh, because I like to try different styles, but I'm pretty selective and then probably sticking in like pretty even lines of what the styles should be. You, sometimes I'll go to your house and, and you enjoy <laughs> bombers, it seems like. I do. The, part of it's just the, the design on the bombers are usually pretty cool. And, you know, ah. I work at a library and they tell you don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> sometimes I judge beers by their bottles because they've got really cool designs. But generally the beers are good too. I. I don't meet many beers I don't like, and those bombers have some cool designs, and they're usually a little more unique, rarer releases, too. <laughs> right. So, I mean, might as well grab them when you, you can. figure if they put that much time into the bottle design, it's probably going to be a pretty good beer, right? Yeah. <laughs> there is an exception. There are exceptions. I had one last night, actually. Um, Didn't like it. Was not my favorite. That's just <laughs> put it that way. I dumped it. So we were, if we were playing, you know. Uh, guzzle it, buy it, dump it? It would... 100% every single time be a dump it. It was from Rogue Brewery out in Oregon. Um, they have their Voodoo Donut series. They've done, I think, four in the oh, series. Oh, man, I've seen those. I've seen them in, like, the, the pink, big pink bottles. Pink bottles. Yeah. I've always, every time I see them, I kind of think, maybe? And then I usually say, no. Are they the, supposed to be a donut flavor? Yes. They're all they're all different yeah. flavors of donut that the actual original Voodoo Donut in Portland sells. The first one was a peanut butter banana chocolate Beer. Have you tried all of them? I have not. I've only tried two of them. I did not have the first one. The second one, which was a maple bacon ale, I did try. Mm-hmm. It was actually pretty excellent. Sounds it was good. <laughs> strange having that bacon flavor with your beer, right. but it mixed really well with like the I, the malts and the, the mm-hmm. maple flavor and everything. It 
It took a while to drink because it was such a unique, yeah. strange flavor, but I enjoyed it. Was it very sweet? Not overly, because I've had okay. some beers with, you know, syrup or maple flavor in them that are just coyingly, overwhelmingly sweet. Mm-hmm. This wasn't that case. But then they right. had the next one was a chocolate raspberry pretzel oh, ale, man. I think. That one it just reminded me too much of like a lambic or like a frambois yeah. or something yeah. with the raspberry. I stayed away from that. Should have done the same with this last one, which I had last night, which was a lemon chiffon crueler ale. Lemon. Yeah. I couldn't see that I was late. intrigued because I thought maybe shandy. Shandy-like. Yeah. yeah. First few sips were pretty good. I'm like, I could, I could get through this. This is pretty decent. And then the more and more I drank it, the more and more it started to taste like what lemon pine salt smells like. Oh, um, boy. That can't be or, good. Or, you know, you open up a moist towelette, that smell <laughs> from that. You know, just kind of that antiseptic... Lysol wipes. Yeah. So <laughs> I got about halfway through a glass I had poured for myself and dumped it and dumped oh, the rest man. of the bottle. Yeah. I, it, was worth the, it was worth the experiment. I mean, that's what you got to do. I mean, you're Can not you, going to find good beers you like yeah. without trying a few that you hate. So it was a failed experiment, but... Is I'm that not, the only one of those, that Voodoo Donut series that they sell right now, or do they sell them all? They're all limited release. I, oh, I've okay. still, I've, when I bought this one, they were still selling the raspberry chocolate pretzel one. I, uh, you're like nope. But they're I, I, done I would with try the bacon maple one. I, I think. should have bought another bottle because I don't know. I don't think I can ever get that. Again, I remember. But, I think that's the one I've seen. I used to see a lot of. Yeah. I guess. But but I would assume they're going to come out with another one eventually because Voodoo Donuts got about a hundred different unique styles of donuts. So. They're artisans in their own right. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> is that like a really big donut shop out west, or is it just? It's the... like gourmet donuts. Mm-hmm. Like, really? Yeah, it's um. Say it's in Portland, or mm-hmm. is it everywhere? It's in Portland. There's only there's two there's locations just... in Portland. Oh, okay. And I think there's two other random locations somewhere out west, but I can't remember yeah. where. Huh. Um, that actually is an interesting question, and maybe we should make this a normal thing of the show, but uh, Brooks, was there ever anything that you really went to experiment with, with like an interesting to oddball type special brew that just did not turn out? Um, I don't think I've ever had one that I despised, really. I mean, I've there's been a few times I've kind of gone off the wall and got some weird stuff before, but I've always liked it. There's been a couple sours I've had that I've got them like, well, it's probably might not be very good, but then I drank them. Like, wow, that's awesome! You like them? Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't know. If there's anything I can really say that I've generally dumped out. Is there? A, what's maybe the weirdest one that you can that you can re- actually? Um, you can't buy it. Um, just like at the liquor store. I, when I stopped at Bell's Brewery uh, on our way up to Traverse City for vacation couple summers ago they had like this it was a sour that they had on tap there that you could only get there <laughs> and i can't oh, i wish i knew the description of it but it was all kinds of funky type <laughs> things in mm-hmm. it and oh man i god i wish i could remember the name or the description <laughs> but it was it was awesome me and one of my friends that had it still talk about it to this day that we really? want to go back up there and have one. It, oh man <laughs> go at the right time and grab right. it again, yeah. I know in college one time, me and my friends got a, it was probably about 2004, 2005, when I think some of the, the craft brewing was starting to get a little popular in, in the very niche culture, but it hadn't exploded like it is now. But it was different ones. I know one of my favorites that I still haven't found in a long time was the Holy Moses White Ale by Great Lakes Brewing. Just because Great Lakes Brewing doesn't distribute to Indiana. Uh, that was great. But the weird one that I did not like was a tulip beer. <clears throat> oh. And, yeah. Made from actual tulips? Yes, they used <laughs> tulip petals in the brewing, it said. Okay. And it tasted like what a flower would smell like. <laughs> oh. And I would not say it was... I mean, it wasn't, like, disgusting, but it was not something I wanted to drink any more of. The beer for rabbits. Like <laughs> yes. Garden, garden pests. <laughs> not for Pete. <laughs> no, no, for Peter Rabbit, not me. <laughs> yeah. ah. Oh, man. <laughs> how, how do you, just out of curiosity, how do either of you feel about, this is another beer I can't really get myself into, the beers that use, like, peppers of some sort in the brewing uh, process, you know, jalapenos mm-hmm. or chilies. Have you had any? Have you enjoyed them? I had one last week when I went to Dayton to uh, Toxic Brew. I, d- I did my uh, um, on location with my friend Pat, 
and I, I've had a few before that, and and the ones I've had before that I would say no, I did not enjoy them. Uh, the pepper taste is usually too overpowering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But this one at Toxic Brew, which I, I know they did growlers, but I don't know that they're big enough that they really bottle yet. Okay. Um, it was really good. Uh, it was blended nicely. It was, I mean, you knew it had a pepper taste, but it wasn't so strangely out of place. And it actually sort of tasted like pepper jack cheese. There was others, it had a smokiness to it. Uh, but I think it was, I think it was an IPA also. Okay. So it had some hot profile in there that helped offset the spice. So it was a little bit subtler with the yeah. spiciness. Yeah, it, it, it was in there. And they had one that was also a, uh, a double pepper IPA or something. Oh, oh. That I couldn't imagine being... Yeah. It, it might have been too much, but I didn't have it, so I, I don't want to comment too much on it, but it was really good, and it was it was weird. My friend Pat described it as like drinking food, because huh. it, it almost had a different mouthfeel than you're used to. I'd imagine so. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Brooks, mm. do you ever have one of those? I think I really only ever had one, ever, and I had it here like right when this place opened up, I can't, remember. I I couldn't tell you what the brewery was or anything, but I remember seeing it, thinking, huh, I like peppers, I like real spicy stuff. It's gonna be good. Was it was it the mole ocho? Is that is that the one that oh. sticks with me? Because I tried that one here. But. Maybe I just remember thinking, ugh, <laughs> it was too much. Whatever it was, it was too much for me. I don't know. I could see how like it could be good, but I think it's. T- <laughs> I it just Whoa. hit the mic with my beer. <laughs> I think it just has to be blended well. It can't right. be too much in the forefront of the, you know, the palate. Otherwise, it's a little yeah. overwhelming. So the reason I asked is one of the other bomber bottles I've got in my fridge currently uh. is a Samuel Adams chocolate chili bock that I've been what? holding on to for a few months. I've been kind really? of afraid to try. Chocolate <laughs> chili bar. Yeah. That was, was another one I had. I didn't have the same Adams, but there was a uh, shock top that was like, uh, I think they called it like the end of the world or something like that. And it was a chocolate uh, chili pepper beer. And yeah. It was, I didn't find it that good. Hmm. Um, it was between that and the Rogue one last night. I wanted to bring in a story about one weird yeah. beer I tried and yeah. I went with the Rogue. So, <laughs> well, I like that. I'm glad. See him. Look at that. This is yeah. maybe our best guess just from the standpoint that he was coming in prepared. Trying to bring, yeah. I, had, I wanted to have a story. <laughs> love it. Love it. Um, well, and one other thing I want to ask before we go to break and then we're going to bust out some games yeah. is we like to ask our guests uh, what if you can remember a craft beer Mm-hmm. that you first had that really seemed to open the door to you of really putting your priority and taste over what other alcoholic benefits you may get out of beer that you're like, you know what? Moving on from the Coors Light and the Keystone Light to something with a little yes. more body and flavor. Yeah, the, in, in, in a lot of people's cases, it's a college transition. Not everybody has to yeah. be that way. but Sure, yeah. Well, I think from what I can remember... Um, Right after I turned 21, my roommate and I really, really wanted to get into, you know, we wanted to be kind of, I guess, beer connoisseurs. We wanted to be well-rounded in our beer palate. I don't know. I don't know what our um, reasoning behind it was, but we would get, you know, the Mixer Sixers and make your own six-packs from Kroger. Mm. And this was 2009, 2010. And so it wasn't really as large of a selection as you can find in like a Kroger or any kind of liquor store now. So it's very limited. So a lot of our, our make your own six packs had Red Stripe, you know, <laughs> Modelo, Landshark. Some Modelo. We were like, these are, these are unique. These aren't Coors Light and Budweiser, <laughs> but yeah. they're kind of in the same vein. But I still remember the first make your own six pack we had, it had the Red Stripe, it had. I think just like a Sam Adams winter lager or not. Mm-hmm. And then there was also, we found Gumball Head and ah. Three Floyds and Upland Wheat. And those two, we like split the glass because we wanted, we had, this is how nerdy we were about it. We had, we, I made an Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> printed it out, put it on the fridge so we could fill it out beer by beer with our ratings, you know, on a scale of one to ten, what we thought of it taste wise, so we'd know whether we wanted to buy it ever again. And I clearly remember hating Gumball Head. 
Really? <laughs> despising it. I'm like, this is the worst thing. What is this? And I preferred the land shark because I was an idiot. But then we got to the last one, which is the upland wheat, and loved it. And, you know, that, I think that was our highest rated beer on our Excel spreadsheet. And... <laughs> From that point on, I mean, I eventually came around and liked Gumball Hut as well. Oh, sure. But for a long time, it was, you know, I'd have a lot of six packs of Upland Wheat because that was kind of a really good transition beer into hoppier, fuller bodied beers. Mm, totally. And right. So, in a way, Gumball Hut was the first one I ever had, but for whatever reason, because I was an idiot, I didn't like it. <laughs> I think that could be said about a lot of people, though. The first time they, I mean, like the first, I couldn't tell you the first one I actually tried. It, the first IPA I ever tried, I was like, oh, why would yeah. anybody ever yeah. drink that? Like, and, what the fuck is that? And Gumball Head is definitely <laughs> yeah. more, it's more of a wheat style, but right. it's got the hop characteristics I mean, yeah, to it as well. It took me a few times, but I eventually came around and be like, okay, I can I th- appreciate this. But I think when, you know, the last beer I had, had prior was a Land Shark, and then I go straight to Gumball Head, yeah, yeah. it's going to be overwhelming. To a young twenty-year-old, twenty-one-year-old's palate, but totally. But you know, Upland Wheat was what really was kind of my gateway into craft beer, and eventually worked my way into, you know, Founders and more sure. Three Floyds and yeah. kind of all the local, you know, regional brewing companies. You're not the first person on this show to answer that question with Upland Wheat, actually. Um, and I think it's interesting, and I didn't, I didn't really. Um, get my first craft beer experience here in the Bloomington area, which might be part of it. Upland's all over the state, but when I started, I had heard of Upland, but it wasn't as prominent when I was in Muncie, but I, I think that's a huge credit to Upland, mm-hmm. what they've done. They've been able to take yeah. take people who had no expectation past, you know, Budweiser, woo, Bud Bowl 2, <laughs> into, yeah, coming into the world of much more flavor and taste in well, beer. Having it right here in town was awesome too. Being able to go right. and have their food too, which is spectacular. If you're ever in Bloomington, go to Upland. They've have you got been a- there lately. I heard they just like remodeled and made oh, it they, huge I, now. I've yeah, heard they a were lot bigger. I knew they were going to expand. I haven't been there since I they think, have. But maybe I'll see if my wife wants to go to dinner there tonight. Hey, but there you go. That was my you first romantic. <laughs> That was my first growler experience too. I would get growlers from there all the time. Yeah. I mean, and now I mean now I'm up in Avon and Avon has cutters and oh, yeah. I'm beating myself up about it. I still haven't gone over there to grab a growler. I'm gonna probably <laughs> really? do that this weekend for the game. So that's a good get but, a couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> my cutters has got some good stuff man. too. Man, my first and only growler is an Upland growler. It's it's had other companies' beers in it since, but I don't know. I'm kind of proud that to carry the Upland growler around. Well, we're going to cut it off there uh, because I can already feel this is a good show, great show, not going to be a short show. (laughs) So we'll take our break. We're going to come back. Brooks and Sam are going to go head-to-head and pick your poison. Ooh. Not feeling confident. <laughs> Not against Brooks. I'm due for a down week, though. I don't <laughs> <either of> you. <laughs> and we also have a game of Is This a Beer? Oh. So stick around. We'll be right back. Shadows fall to my window. Night is coming on. Okay, we're back and it's game time. Get the games Ooh, on. So nervous. <laughs> I think you'll be all right, Sam. I believe in you. At least someone does. No. <laughs> <laughs> do or don't do. There is no try. Thank you for that. <laughs> Pete, Pete is my own personal Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with pick your poison. Oh and, boy. Brooks, I'm going to have you lead off just because um, I know Sam's listening to the show. He knows how the game goes by listening. I think it's something else to actually do it. And so you're going to lead it off, let him get an idea. So I guess dive in, buddy. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> so he's taking a sniff. He's got kind of a hmm. an amber to yellow color sitting in front of him there. I know what he's got, but see if hmm. he does. And again, to play the game, pick your poison. We have samples. He's going to try it. Oh, man. 
You get two points per round. The first point is for figuring out what the style of beer is. And then I'm going to give you three options. Excuse me. <laughs> I've been drinking. <laughs> I'm going to give you three <clears throat> options off of the menu, and you have to guess which one of those right. that exact beer was. Ooh. So he's thinking about it. Uh, also, while, while he's kind of thinking, Brooks, just signal me when you're ready. Um, Sam on the show here, and it, I've seen it before. If you Another reason to watch the YouTube feed, because we took a picture of it, I'll put up there. <laughs> Rogue Beer has their hazelnut brown nectar, which is one of their standard brews. Classic. And the artwork of it is a man... <laughs> Holding a, holding a mug. A flagon of ale. A flagon of ale. <laughs> He's a little thinner haired up top, fuller down on the face, around the chin area. Who does that sound like? <laughs> With glasses. And I swear to God, they somehow stole your image. It's like the Simpsons episode when Homer's image got taken by the, uh, the soap. Yeah. Mr. Soap. Clean? Yeah. No, no, Mr. Mr. Clean. Mr. Sparkle. Mr. Sparkle, yeah. <laughs> well... I'm going to a conference in Portland in a couple of months. Rogue's only a couple hour drive. Maybe I'll go over there and have some words with them. Yeah, you know, or, or shoot some headshots and do like a live action. There ad. we go, yeah. <laughs> see if I can get some royalties. Yeah, yeah, maybe they'll finally pay you. Stop hating, Rogue. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> get out of his closet. It, it, well, the first time I saw that bottle, though, it was pretty shocking. Yeah. I, like, I remember you uh, put a picture of you next to the bottle up on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. Facebook awesome. profile pic for a while too, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Brooks, it's are you still? <clears throat> it's a good beer too. The hazelnut brown nectar. I, I should mention as well. It's excellent. I don't know what I think this is. Are there any characteristics that you can describe that maybe we I can mean, talk it, you through it? I'm not going to give you any clues. It's but. freaking strong. Freaking strong. Yeah. All right. I don't know. It's. I, does my, it have a hoppy taste? Does it not, have a, My initial guess was like a triple or a quadruple or something like that, but... Oh, man. Color-wise, that's kind of dark for a... Yeah. Belgian I, style. I hate I to know, put the pressure I, on you. I don't want to be a dick a, here, but... I was thinking of that or like a barley wine, but I thought a barley wine was a little darker than that. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean... It's just so damn strong. I'm going to guess barley wine. Brooks is going with the barley wine, and he got it. Is what? it really? It is a barley oh wine. Oh my god! I don't know what it is yet, but you got it. It's so <laughs> strong. <laughs> the master. <laughs> okay. A... Well, this might help you by looking at them. Okay. The Lagunitas brown sugar. Mm-hmm. Dogfish head, old school. Okay. And the Taps own wo uh, old wooden head. Old wooden head, you say? Yeah. So now Brooks is going to evaluate those three options, see if he can't, <clears throat> from the taste, figure out what it may have been. You know, I, I think I've got my guess. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, only I, be I, only I, because... I see the description for the one and the way you've described it. Only because it is 15% alcohol by volume. I'm going to go with the dogfish head old school. <laughs> ding, 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 Brooks. <laughs> it's perfect this round. <clears throat> I mean, jeez. <laughs> He's passing it to Sam to try. Holy hell. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that's right, good. Here. It is wow. Good. I know. That that is, I got to so. try this now. Uh, all right. I've got a bottle of 120 minute IPA at home. Ooh, I haven't tried. There you go. I mean, that's like 18%. Yeah, that's I know. I haven't had off. that, but I've seen 18%. Holy crap. <laughs> well, it varies apparently depending on the age and when it, which batch it was from, but mm -hmm. roughly you know, that 18. That means it's good. <laughs> yep. That that's a hell of a beer. <laughs> I know, right? Some hair on your chest. And Brooks, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm really congratulatory on you for this round because I I really thought I had a hard one for you. No, so I would. I, I, I would buy my only two options just because it was so strong. But <clears throat> I don't know if I could have got barley wine though, just from the taste. Uh, I just. It's very sweet, but then yeah, you get get all that liquor on the back end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Down. That's good. I. Could, I, I couldn't see myself drinking more than one. Well, obviously, I probably shouldn't. It would be unsafe. Oh, shit. That'll, <laughs> that'll put you out. That'll yeah. put me to bed. I, I would definitely take one of those home if it had a, in bottles, though. Yeah. How much is the si serving size that they give you here? Oh, ten okay. ounces. It's just a 10 ounce. <laughs> Hopefully, it is. Yeah. 
Could you imagine getting pint. a full pint? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Huh. All I would Comes need. with complimentary Uber bar. service, taxi service. Yeah. To get home. Jeez. Okay. Uh, on, onward. Now, Sam, this is also another reason we have the pretzels here on hand, because you really want to clean your palate to make sure you're getting your full, full taste of yours. Now he's got. I'll just describe it to the listeners as he preps for this round. He's got a darker one ahead of him. Um, so quite dark. Yeah, it kind of looks black as midnight. Mm-hmm. It's pretty <laughs> opaque. I can't see through it at all. So no light coming through. Hmm. All right. Here he goes. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Little sniff test. Yeah. Uh, Not well, much smell to it. It's very very light. As far as the smell goes, I'm sure not as the taste goes. <laughs> okay. Judging on the, the Excellent. color. Excellent. Some everything's a clue, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, now, and and I'll give credit to everyone who comes on and plays this game, and it's not an easy game. Uh, and and every clue might not always be decipherable. Um, not everyone is a beer Sherlock Holmes like Brooks. Well. <laughs> so. It had quite the head on it too for a sample. <clears throat> I have to say. Still has quite the head on it, and it's been sitting here a good five minutes or so. so. I know what I'd guess. I'm I'm leaning towards what I'm guessing too. It's got to be something on nitro, I would right. think, judging by the head. I'm All right. See, there's another clue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Color, scent, or lack of scent can help decipher what it is. There's some more on nitro than I was hoping for, though. I was hoping it'd be like, <laughs> That's gonna I was say, hoping I it'd be like, like two. Well, yeah. and you're just trying to trying to nail the the style, right? So, which I'm never that great at. Really? I, you okay. know, I grab a bottle of beer. I'm like, oh, this is a Scotch ale. <laughs> yep, tastes good. Oh, this is a porter. <laughs> yep, tastes good. Tastes good. Yeah, but I should have done more studying ahead of time. Oh, uh, that's okay. That's okay. And 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 I think the other thing too that. Um, at least for people who who play this game for the first time, you can redeem yourself. If you mess the first thing up, you're still going to get three, and and I've seen people come back from that. Yeah? You know, I, I'm going to take a leap of faith here. Judging by the taste, the second little sip I had tastes very familiar. I've definitely had it before. Okay. I'm just going to go right out and say I I think you gave me old chub. <laughs> oh, He's You're gonna go, guess going a full for it old all. Chub. Interesting. <clears throat> so yeah. it's a, it's a cause, I mean there's three beers <clears throat> that I can tell that are on nitro. Four. There's two stouts. There's three stouts. There's Guinness, Bell's Double Cream, <clears throat> and Young's Double Chocolate, and then there is the Oscar Blues Old Chub. Well and like I said, I'm not good at distinguishing <clears throat> between types. <laughs> It tastes kind of like a Scotch ale, but then again, it could be just a lighter stout too. So okay, um, you know what? I'm just going to invent it right now, Brooks. A wrinkle into this game. Okay. If somebody is able to forego all of it and just guess the right thing right off the bat, we'll call it a three-point shot. We'll get basketball rules into this. Oh, okay. But I want to make sure, Sam, that that is really <laughs> the full direction you want to oh, go. Oh God! With. Now you're making me <laughs> doubt myself. <laughs> I mean, I, I will accept an answer of to both of those right off the bat if that's the way you want to go. Uh, or he could just get Scotch Ale and see if I'm going to give him Scotch Ale options. There is that. I could either go for three points. I could say Scotch Ale, and if I'm wrong, then I know it's one of those three stouts most likely. Right. <sighs> God. <laughs> so I'm laying down the table. It's fully, fully your nope. option. Nope. Oscar Blues old chop. I'm just going for it. <laughs> that is a confident man. He looks a screwed. wrong man, but confident. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. <clears throat> okay, can I have a second guess for no points? No points, second guess, go for it. And the, I will tell you it is a stout. <clears throat> and it was probably the, the Young's double chocolate. No. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, okay. I'm done. I was gonna this give you the good being here. I'll see what <laughs> options. Sam is left. I wish you would come back because there's still another round. Brooks may totally botch it. I can uh, still tie, right? Yeah. And or you know, get another three. What's well, interesting, and I didn't expect you to necessarily go as as bold on your guess as I was going to, but it is the Bell's Double Cream. Go big or go home, I guess. Uh, and it's it says that this stout 
uh, blends 10 different specialty malts to yield a remarkable depth of flavor and mm. focuses on softer, cocoa and espresso-like aspects of roasted malts. Well, see, if I had read that description, I might have leaned more towards that. Shouldn't have got ahead I, of yourself. I shouldn't but have. Not, I was a little too cocky there. Not too far off of a description of what you would get out of Old Chubb. Exactly. Um, yeah. they're, they're remarkably similar for being different styles. So I had not foreseen this scenario develop. <laughs> Me completely tanking it on the first one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, go big or go home. Yep. So yeah, it's it's not as crazy a guess as it may seem listening to this. So um yeah. All right. Kicking myself. Two points, well, Brooks. Uh, Sam with a little bit of a goose egg. Uh, it's no. me. Brooks. Brooks is gonna go with the darker one. <laughs> All right, so I want to I should set up last week if you guys didn't listen Brooks and I went head-to-head and we were able to pick beers for each other I really went hard on him and both beers he gave the same blah, blah look to stuck his tongue out and everything and He just gave that same expression yeah, on this one damn Oh my gosh, and I'm looking at the wrong page. I'm looking at last week's here. We go. Okay. Yeah, yeah now I know what it is so bad Last week's beer. It's uh, not last week's I beer, know, though. Man. I promise. That you. would be. It isn't. That would be a twist. Yeah. Oh God. I don't know. I feel like it was very memorable to him. That he would know. <laughs> this again. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget this. <laughs> All right. He's still taking a sniff. Um, and Sam, actually, I'll bring up. Um, we went to the Pacers versus Celtics game last Friday. Yeah. Actually, I had to leave the taping here and went up. Yup. Uh, and actually, it's interesting when you're talking earlier about your Arctic Panzer Wolf, how you're talking about some beers really just blast you on the hops. And I think there's actually a place for them. I don't want to uh, oh, put those down. Yeah. You had one that I think is kind of in that vein. They were serving it uh, there. It was a Sun King. Fist full, full of hops. hops. Ah, that's good. Had it. Yeah, and Brooks had it. And that is one where it is fully for the hops lovers. It, it is in your face, and it's good. I mean, like like you said, not to take anything away from those in-your-face hoppy beers, because that one was excellent, and couldn't have picked a better beer to have at a sporting event, you know. And I'd rather have that than a Coors Light. Totally. Rather, yeah. so. And what was really interesting, too, it was a very good game. It the pace Surprisingly. Went down yeah. the whole first half. Yeah, yeah. Went sure did. Yeah. And the hapless Celtics who had just traded away Jeff Green that morning and somebody else. They'd made two trades. They traded someone else like a day later I think too. Oh and then they traded uh, Austin Rivers today or yesterday. To the Clippers. Clippers to play for his, for his dad. dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean I don't even know. Are they just picking people off the streets? Of Is Donnie Wahlberg starting for him now or at least on the bench? <laughs> I would go to Celtics games Invincible. to watch Donnie. <laughs> to watch Donnie play they, for the Celtics. Yeah. <laughs> They can't have actual basketball players with how many people they've traded away. But somehow Brad Stevens still coaches them into a semi-decent team. Come back. Come back to right? the state, Brad. <laughs> That's the guy, the guy sitting behind us. We love you, we, Stevens. They, when they, we got there right as they were announcing the Celtics team and the coach and everything. Yeah. And, and the coach, Brad Stevens, and the guy behind us like, future coach of the Hoosiers right there. <laughs> yeah. like, That'd be awesome. So. Yeah. All right. Well. It's either a stout or a porter. I can't figure out which one I want to guess. All right. Uh, I'm going to need a definitive answer uh, from you, Brooks. You are correct. It is a stout or a porter. Mm. <laughs> stout. Brooks is going to go with the stout. It is actually a porter. Fuck. Two yeah, weeks there, yeah. one porter. Sam has life. <laughs> Sam is not shut str- out yet. I struggle with differentiating stouts and too. porters It sometimes. can be tough because they both <clears throat> can have very similar flavor characteristics. That, that coffee and... Uh, yeah. Well, uh... What do we got here? You're gonna lo- uh, look between the Stone Smoked Porter, Founders Porter, or the Taps Own London Funk. But, uh, yeah, Sam and I... Don't think it's that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which one was that? The Stone Smoked Porter. All right, and that one was because it has, uh, chocolate and orange yeah. prominent flavors. You're gonna knock it off? It okay. just tastes like a regular old porter. Regular old porter. Nothing, nothing that one's way. not on the menu. If I don't, yeah. only there was <laughs> one of those listed as a regular old, old porter. They, they they really would have been phoning in the description that day if they just said regular old porter. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, uh, we were both rooting for the Pacers, Sam, to get back to the story, I guess. But Boston has one of my favorite college players, <laughs> Kelly Olynyk, The man, uh, the myth, the legend. The eggs. The uh, hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. And it, he, got, he didn't start either at halftime or the, the start of the game, but that man plays beautifully. The Celtics were much more interesting to watch when he was on the court. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Absolutely. All I right. think they were well, better off with Zeller on the court. Yeah. But Olympic he was more entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it did go to overtime. We definitely got our money's worth. The Pacers pulled it off. We went home happy. <laughs> and then laid two eggs against the Sixers and, and the, the Timberwolves. Wolves. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. <laughs> they lost to the Sixers? Oh, and I didn't the see that. The Wolves back, are worse than back. the – Yeah, the Wolves are have a worse record are than the Sixers. Are they really? Yeah. Mo Williams put up 52. 52. <laughs> Mo Good Williams. God. Good <laughs> yeah. God. Brooks, you got a guess? So you already eliminated Stone Smoked Porter. You're between Founders yeah. Porter and the Taps London Funk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like the shot clock's ticking on this one. All right, I'm going to go with Founders. Old regular named Porter. You are yes, right. Old reg- yeah. Founders Porter uh, is probably the most standard uh, style of Porter you could right. get. Uh, I'm sure it's not bad. It's all right. I think my tastes are starting to turn away from porters for some reason. That's I don't I'm know. Not mm-hmm. the biggest fan. I mean, I'll drink them, but they're... Well, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I will drink them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not my go-to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. Brooks has three points. You have really <laughs> forced me into a corner here. I've got to name it outright again in order to tie. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, but I didn't think about that instant instituting the three point, but yeah. Um, I mean, otherwise, I just, I mean, I lose one way or the other, otherwise. Yeah, or, I mean, you could go for some respectability and just put some points on the board. There is that, yeah. Um, I don't know if you need a pretzel between. I've had a couple. I think we're All right. ready. He's ready to just dive in. It's got yeah. a nice, it's got good clarity. It's not, yeah. it's not one of those cloudy beers. It's got nope. a bit of an amber color to it. Pick anything up from the scent? Not at all. Huh. I also have a terrible sense of smell. Well, there you go. He's tasting, pondering. <coughs> well, that was considering. Different. <laughs> that was unique. Um, hmm. Unique in New York. <laughs> <laughs> the human tort was denied <laughs> a bank loan. <laughs> um, <coughs> God damn it. <laughs> Like I said earlier, this is not an easy game. It's not. It sounds easy when you're listening to it in your car <laughs> driving around, but <laughs> when you're here at the table, not so much. And I it will definitely say- hits you with the hops right off the bat. Um, it gets kind of sweet at the end, though. And you're just, well, unless you're trying to go for the full three-pointer. I... You're just trying to name the. I feel style. like there's a lot of beers I could choose from in that case. So. <laughs> yeah. Want to play a little conservative? Look, it was a little. I could narrow it down a lot easier with that other one. This one, not so much. And and you still have is this a beer? That's true. So. Yeah, Brooks may win this game, but yeah. Won the battle, well, but I may not have won the war. Brooks is a son of a bitch. How good he is <laughs> on is this a beer too? Son of a bitch. It's some sort of IPA. It has to be. <clears throat> All right. There we go. You're definitely in the right ballpark. Do I have to be specific, like Imperial or American? I'm, I am I actually make Brooks do it. Uh, I give him half point if he can just name IPA. <laughs> I give him the full point if he can name if it's the American Imperial or, gotcha. or what have you. Okay. I'm going to give you the full point, Sam, because this is your first time playing. Can I guess what kind of IPA it you is? You absolutely can. I'll okay. give you... I'll give you a bonus half point. Okay. You at best you can come within a half point of Brooks. I'll probably still get it wrong, but um, I believe in you. One more little sip here. This is like little giants. I believe in them. <laughs> it doesn't seem strong enough to be an imperial, but okay. It could just be masking it well too. He's deducing it down. Because the Arctic Panzer Wolf that you had earlier was definitely an Imperial. Sure was. It was not shy it. about its hopping. No. I'm going to go with American IPA. You have a point and a half, Sam. Hell hey. yeah. 
<laughs> All right. I don't know if All I right. like this new point system. <laughs> <laughs> don't you love it when they just make rules up in the just, middle of a game? It's like, on whose line is it anyway? <laughs> yeah. The points are made up, or the points don't matter, whatever it is. Rules are made Rules up, are made the, up points the points don't, don't matter. matter. Yeah. Yeah. I still believe in the integrity of this game, though. <laughs> Well, Brooks is still going to win. I didn't go for it all. Unless you somehow get another one and a half points on some bullshit on this <laughs> question. I don't know. I will concede to you. Sam, you what, your what city choices. the brewery's in, you can get another half point. <laughs> your choices are the Lagunitas IPA, mm -hmm. the Bell's Two-Hearted, or the Daredevil Liftoff. Ooh. Oh, and actually, um, while he's looking that over, I did want to say... Um, our first round of beers, I don't know if anybody picked up on it. Maybe they did. And our second round of beers, every beer that we're having as a feature beer on the show today is an Indiana brewed beer. Ah, yes. There's a lot on the menu. There's a lot of good choices on the menu. Sticking to the home state. Not that I have anything against the other ones, because I think Brooks and I have shown affinity to breweries all across the country. Sure. But there is... <clears throat> Quite the plethora of Indiana breweries to choose from, and there is. There's, they add more and more every day. It seems like now the samples don't have to be in Indiana, correct? No, okay. and they yeah. actually aren't. No, no. <laughs> uh, Dogfish Head Ale uh, is oh, yeah. out of Delaware. Lagunitas, California. Lagunitas, yeah. California. Bell, uh, your Bell's Double Cream was out of Michigan. Yeah. Kalamazoo. The Founders Porter was out Michigan, of Michigan, right? also, yeah. which is. Uh, I don't know what city. That's you know what? I'm not going to say because I can't remember. In Grand Rapids. I want to say it's Grand Rapids, but I'm Sounds probably wrong. Right. Yeah, the Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo are, are cities that are, I think, about an hour apart in the middle yeah. part of the state. Or I might be thinking of Lansing See, now. Son I of have, a I'm in a bit of a predicament here. Yeah. Because I've had all three of these beers that are my choices. I just don't know which one it is. Yeah, it's in <laughs> Grand Rapids. All it's right. Lagunitas IPA, an American IPA that is full of flavor with notes of spice, roasted malts, caramel, and citrus fruit. I might have to count that one out. I didn't get a lot of spice in there. Okay. All right, so we're so, going to so knock then, off a I think we are. IPA. You're yeah. right. It is not the Lagunitas IPA. Oh, you're giving me <clears throat> hints even that far. Okay. Well, and, and that's one thing that I, I have done in the past. When okay. somebody's ruled one out, I will confirm if well, good. it is good. I'm glad my palates were fine enough to tell that difference. Yeah. So we're down to two-hearted or liftoff, correct? Yep. Two-hearted. For fans of the show, we'll know that that was Brooks's favorite and, and kind of brought him into the craft beer tasting. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You know, the thing is with Two Hearted, though, I don't think I've ever had it on draft. I've always just had it, like, you know, bottles, six, the bottle. in the bottles. But there always is a little bit of a difference when you do that. The description here, just for our listeners, a significant malt body balances its hop presence together with the signature fruity aromas of Bell's house yeast. This leads to a remarkably drinkable IPA. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that just because I like the idea that you gave me two Bell's beers. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, you know, this is not a video show. I just grinned ear to ear because, Sam, you're right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I did. I gave him two Bells beers. <laughs> All right. Well done. So, so Sam finished. I didn't, I didn't lose as bad as I thought I would. Yeah. Half Sam a point behind. with two and a half points. Brooks wins with three. Congratulations, sir. Yeah. Brooks has not been beaten yet. Someday he's uh, he's been taken down to a draw, but I don't want to lose. I'm gonna get all kinds of shit for it. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting I, kicked off the show the day you know. I will find Start a way to come out. back for a rematch, and it'll be on. You can come back whenever. like Donkey Kong. <laughs> Fair enough. And and uh, I'm gonna come back with like a notepad full of notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do my homework. <laughs> this could be an empty boast, but at Winterfest, I really want to find you. And and maybe we can somehow arrange arrange oh, a one a round fest for one rounder. A I'll, one round there we go. Death. <coughs> Who's uh, pick your poison? That'd be cool. I'll let you know where I am. I just hope I don't get parking lot duty because it'll probably be cold as. <laughs> we'll bring them out to you. <laughs> yeah. We'll bring back Snowman <laughs> Sam. Uh, all right, and now we're gonna roll right into this. Is uh, is this a beer? Oh, it was empty. <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting glass with my elbows, but. Is this a beer? Sam, do you know how to play? I believe I do. You're going to name us some beers. 
whether they're real or fake, we must determine. <coughs> Absolutely. Much. And and the control is uh, all of the real beers are taken off of the TAPS bottled beer list. And the fake ones are made up by me. If they happen to be a real beer but are not on the bottles list, it's still a fake in this game. <laughs> Number Fair one, enough. Indica IPA. Indica IPA? Yeah. Sounds, and sounds simple. I-N-D-I-C-A. Yep. Maybe too simple. Indica IPA, and I'm going to have to put on my best poker face because it has given away answers before <laughs> in the past. So I'm just going to go cross-eyed. Is this a beer? <laughs> um, it's really difficult to look at you right now. <laughs> I can go extremely cross-eyed. Indica IPA. I think it's too simple. I think I think I, it's like that red room you pulled a couple weeks yeah. ago. I, I'm going with no. I'm going to also say no. Two fakes. You both are wrong. Oh. You know what? <coughs> Lost Coast Brewery out of California. It is an American IPA. Wow. Indica IPA. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. <laughs> All right, guys, number two, Delirium Nocturnum. Shit. Oh, right, I got to go cross-eyed. <laughs> Delirium <laughs> Nocturnum. I can't speak when I'm cross-eyed. Delirium Nocturnum. Oh, uh, they both uh, look perplexed. Oh. I'm going to say yeah. Going real Here's, for Brooks. Yep. Here's my conundrum. I have a beer in my fridge right now called Delirium something or other, but I don't think it's... Nocturnum, <clears throat> but the people who made this one, because I think it, I feel like the beer I have is called like Delirium Trimmins or something like that. Interesting. But maybe the same bre- maybe the same brewer has multiple Deliriums with different endings to it. I don't, you know, just for the sake of you know Brooks, it being you a game. Real? Yeah, I went real. I'm gonna go with not real. Sam's going not real. What's interesting is Sam was completely Dr. Seussing on, uh, not Dr. Seuss, sleuthing onto the correct answer. It is real. Ah. It's out of Belgium. <laughs> it's a strong dark ale. It's probably the same brewery, too. Yeah, um, it, and it's just listed as Deterium noc- Delirium Nocturnum. I'm not sure if Delirium is the brewer or. It could be. It's the brand, or if it's just part of the name. Okay. I didn't think it gave it away, so I included it. See, that's what threw me off. I overthought <clears throat> it. I was like, no, because Delirium Trimmins is a beer. You've got to go with your first dance And I bet yeah. that is <laughs> from Belgium. Yep, it is. I bet it's the same company. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> or maybe Abbey, depending. Could be a Trappist. You're killing me, Pete. All right, so Brooks has got one. Sam, you're the one that talked you out of your ear. <laughs> that one is on I, you, Sam. I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, number three, Deep Space Cosmonaut. Deep Space Cosmonaut. It's cool. No. I'm just being definitive. No. <laughs> Definitively no for Sam. One of them's got to be fake at some yeah, point. Yeah, that's what I was getting <laughs> I'm going to go no, nah, fake. I can't trick you guys on the <laughs> fake ones. <laughs> I, I thought that was perfect. It sounds cool, but... By the way, anybody making a Russian Imperial Stout... Talk to me. I'm going to trademark. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> Deep Space Cosmonaut. Not officially. Just uh, who's drinking what trademark. Deep Space Cosmonaut. Just call your brewery Deep Space Brewing Company and then have all sorts Ooh. of cool. Holy and then shit. You can just have. Yes. Oh, man. Cosmonaut, Black Hole. Sputnik. Yeah. Sputnik. <laughs> white Dwarf. You could make a white ale. I think Super, we're on to something Supernova here. could be like some sort of like triple IPA or oh, something. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's start it tomorrow. I think uh, we're on to something. Uh, quad <laughs> rocket could be a quadruple. There we go. Quad rocket. <laughs> Damn straight. All right, guys. Number four, we're playing five today. Dirty Helen. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I choked myself, broke my chair, and went cross-eyed permanently. I'd like to think that there's someone out there that named a beer Dirty Helen. I gave her the old dirty hell of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys remember that old uh, SNL sketch with Tim Meadows, the ladies' man? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when oh, it was yeah. like, oh, uh, yeah, we tried to bust you, but we don't know what an Alabama crab dangle is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, I yeah. made that up, but that's a real sex act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what a dirty Helen is. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's real. The old dirty Helen. Brooks is I going. Like, I just like dirty it. Dirty Helen is real. Sam. I will agree because I think 
it's if I remember correctly, it's an Upland beer. Oh, Dirty Helen is from Barley Island, out of Indiana, or Barley Island. It's an English <laughs> brown ale. <laughs> Barley Island, what is that? I don't know honestly, but it is an Indiana beer. It's on the the bottles menu here at the tap. I had definitely heard of it. I was just waiting for Brooks to say something. Barley Island. What yeah. city is that? A city? Do we have I, an Do we have an I island in Indiana? Not. I want to. I want to go to there. <laughs> live on Barley Island. Am I missing out on something in this state yeah. that I don't know about? So score going into the last. Is this a beer? Is Brooks three, Sam two. So the best I can do is tie again. <clears throat> Yay! <laughs> and our final one is Hop Wallop. Hop Wallop? It's a fake. It's a good fake. Yeah, I thought Deep Space Cosmonaut was too. So. <laughs> I like that. I don't know. Did I come up with two deliciously great fakes? Did what was it called again? Hop Wallop. Hop Wallop. I think. Yeah. I think it's a real beer. If Mike Tyson made boxing gloves out of hops, sucker punched you, we would call it a Hop Wallop. My only move here. <clears throat> It's to say it's not a real beer, so I can try to tie. That's the true. Worst I can do is lose. The best I can do is tie. So I might as well <laughs> go the opposite of what Brooks said and say it's not real. Sam, you're in trouble when you let Brooks go first and you try to go opposite because that is a victory beer out of Pennsylvania. It's an Imperial ah, IPA. Yes. What do you know? Victory beer, really? Yeah. I'd never heard of it. It just sounded kind of cool. So, bump, 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 bump. Uh, Brooks is our reigning yes. champ for two rounds now. But yeah. I want to say, Sam, that was well played. It was... I tried. Let's put it. Th- I mean, I, I got did... lucky on the dirty Helen. I went real, and I didn't think it was real. I just kind of <laughs> liked the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe maybe you'll order one sometime, or maybe we'll see some dirty Helen on tap here. The next time I make it to a whatever <laughs> keep island. The dirty Ruth away from here, you sickos! <laughs> no, dirty Ruth is a slut. <laughs> She hangs out with Dirty Sanchez all day long. Ooh. <laughs> this is getting this is getting bad. Time I'm going to send it to break. <laughs> you know what? Uh, we're going to come up with our last segment. We're going to get all get our second beers. Yeah, yeah. And we have yes. a This Day in Beer History. Looking forward to it. So stick around. We'll be right back. I like girls and cut off blue jeans. Is that really oh so bad? Sometimes I think I miss my call. Should have been Sir Galahad. Memories, they come to me. I find I see places I'd like to be my mind. It runs in circles for what seems forever. Stop and never. All right. Thank you for listening. Sticking with us. We're here with our second round of beers. About to wrap the show up soon, but before that, uh,. We all went dark. We went very dark. It's yeah, it's yeah. like the Black Beer Society here, guys. I would like to cheer, but um, my beer will slosh over. Yeah, it's so, pretty full. And it's it may break our glasses. It's kind of built like a it's tank. It's also in a very large goblet. Yeah. I, I feel like... Kind of intimidating. <laughs> totally. Like a mid-12th century British king drinking out of this. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, prost, guys. Um, I'll just hold my hand up while you guys. Clinky. Yeah, prost. I'm Ooh. in love. Yeah, this, and is, this is good. I'm not afraid to say it. Oh. <laughs> Holy crap. That is good. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, my. My. It's everything I want a stout to be with mine. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, yep. Sam and I yep. got related yep. ones, so we're going to go back to back. We're going to let Brooks wrap this up because I'm so excited. Thank I'm going to save it first. I got the Daredevil JWP, but I got the Rare Devil Edition. Now, this is a stout, uh, and it says a harmonious integration of American stout and Buffalo Trace bourbon barrel delivers abundant layers of diverse chocolate and espresso. And I've been getting heavily, or increasingly more into enjoying barrel-aged beers. And I don't think I've had a stout. And this is like the best blend I've had. Second only, or or I should say second now after having this is an Old Chub 
when I was in Longmont, a barrel aged oh, old truck. Oh wow, that that. <laughs> that that I could maybe get behind. I'm not usually big on the the bourbon flavor in my in my stouts, but, but this is this is you get that delicious. you get like the buffalo trace, you get the that oak yes, aged. But it's, it blends really well. It's not like it's the dominant taste because sometimes that's those are the ones I don't care for. The ones that are overpowering with their bourbonness. Bourbonness is not a word, but <clears throat> it is now. It is now. <laughs> uh, and so that's the JWP Rare Devil Edition. Sam, what did you get? I got the Dare W. Dare Dare W. What is that? <laughs> I I don't know. He's been drinking. <laughs> can we cut that out? No. <laughs> that's okay. I uh, can, but I won't. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Daredevil JWP regular edition. It is a regular stout, 6.5 ABV, nine grains and American hops to deliver a huge bouquet of aromas and abundant flavors of rich, silky espresso and chocolate in an expressive American stout. So I would assume most likely this is the original thread of the JWP and they take some of it and age it in bourbon barrels, and that's what you have. I have the baby version of it, the one that hasn't <laughs> grown up and grown attached to bourbon. Ah. You know what, and I bet you're right, and and because it's extra aged anyway, mm -hmm. the alcohol content jumps a percent and a half, so yours is 6.5, mine is an 8. Makes sense, but it's excellent. It's just the, like the perfect balance. It has the hop characteristics, but it's got the malt which is what I look for in a stout. It's like that yeah. smooth kind of creaminess. You know, it has a little bit of that espresso, which I know you're not a fan of, Peter, but it's it's not overpowering like some can be. It's, it's all very well mixed together. And we have switched beers now. I am about to yeah, try out the Rare Devil. Let's and try out. Pete's going to find out what the original tastes like. And I'm just sitting here. Get back in your corner, <laughs> Brooks. Wow. Holy shit. Oh. I actually like that. Like I said, I'm not a huge bourbon barrel aged fan. But you hit the nail on the head. That it's well blended, it's well mm -hmm. put together. <laughs> to, like, for lack of a better way of putting well, it. You definitely get the barrel taste, but it's not the only taste. It's like, not it's overwhelming. Not yeah. covering up the original taste. And what's really great about tasting yours is now I can completely see the journey that it mm -hmm. took. Absolutely. It just blends perfectly with the flavors already present in the original. It's really good. Oh, Excellent. Man. Well done, Daredevil. Well done. Absolutely. They're building a new facility up by the Speedway. They are. They're getting a bigger facility, which if this is the stuff that they're doing there, it's give them as much space as they need. I drove by <laughs> it a couple weeks ago. It's massive. It's really? just south of the Delara IndyCar factory. And... Went there actually for Wait, a. Where's it at in Indy? Where? It's on it's on Main Street actually in Speedway. It's okay. a block okay. or two south of Speedway actually. It's I mean, be perfect. Is it fairly close to you. About maybe a 15, 20 minute drive. 15? Oh okay. If even I'd, that, I'd it's, make that drive. Oh absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm planning on it once it opens. You need uh, a roommate, Sam. <laughs> I'll just bum around and come on up. Drink all the breweries <laughs> up in Indy. But yeah, they're planning on, I guess, having it open by the time the Indy 500 rolls around this year. Uh, that's a good. That's call, gonna probably. be. The, that's gonna be the place to be that weekend, or any weekend to May for that matter. If I'm some huge NASCAR, or uh, excuse me, not NASCAR. I'm <clears throat> I'm not the biggest race fan, Indy so car. I apologize. If I'm a huge race fan, but like a southern rich eccentric gentleman, I buy a keg of this. Put it on my, uh, put it on my, uh, what do you call those? Traveling wagons? Tailgate? Shit. RV. RV? <laughs> <laughs> Traveling wagons. Put it on my RV, set up, I don't know, infield, outside, wherever you yeah. go. <clears throat> Drink this and watch the race. Oh. That'd be nice. Have if you guys been to the 500? I've only ever no. been to qualifying and like carb day. I've never been to the. Yeah, have you been to carb day? Yeah. Well, that's, that's the important part. Like, you've gone out there and drank and done that whole thing. Yeah. Oh, I've, man. No, well, I haven't actually. I've only, I was only been to Carb Day under 21, oh, you know, under I gotcha. legal drinking age. He I've was been sober there, I've been there yeah. twice since I've been 21, and oh yeah. man, I've it's worked freaking wild. That's I, just nuts. I've worked concessions the actual race and had free time to just wander around the infield. Yeah, it was like an otherworldly experience. It's just like thousands was, and thousands of completely <clears throat> shit-faced people. It's. <laughs> 
it's an experience. That's oh, for man, sure. It's so fun, though. Uh, you can just kind of do whatever the hell you want to do. I mean, that's awesome. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's it's something that's not just an Indiana thing either. I mean, people come in from all over the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a huge thing. It's one of the biggest sporting events in the world. Now I'm yeah. kind of excited to go to the Indy 500 this year. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't go last year. I would like to Was go. the first time you hadn't gone in a while? Uh, I had went the two years previous to that. And ugh, I'm getting a little too old for that nonsense, I think. Well, Brooks, I'm sorry. I've made you wait long enough. Yeah. All right. What are you drinking for your second round? All righty. Well, since we are going with the Indiana breweries, I went with the old Sun King Brewery out of Indianapolis. I got their red, white, and woo porter. Fantastic um, name. Uh, yeah, pretty solid. Um, the description reads, this red porter was brewed with cracked white grains and blue corn, packed with a patriotic punch what? of roasted <laughs> malt flavor. <clears throat> um, I must say, it, it doesn't taste like a porter to me at all. I don't... Interesting. It has definitely like a little... You can pick up on the alcohol. I don't think it's 8 or 9%. I don't even... I don't know how to describe it. I like it a lot. It's really smooth for a porter. Yeah. Which, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. You guys need to try it. I, I like it a lot. You I, don't hear about many beers being brewed with corn. Yeah, that's, that's, that's strange. Unique. I don't know if I've ever had one like that, but it's... I, hmm. I don't, dogfish had... I don't. If you ever, I think it's still on Netflix. There's a documentary. It's like six episodes long. There's a series they had on Discovery a few years back. Like each episode is a different beer that they make. One of their really unique ones. And huh. one of the beers was this from this ancient Incan recipe from like in Peru. And they like used chewed corn in the beer. Like they had chewed. Chewed. It was the strangest and grossest thing I've ever seen. Had, they had huh. all, the, all the dogfish had employees sitting at their cubicles at their office, chewing corn and spitting it that into cups. That is interesting. And then they use that to brew the beer. Slightly mastitize it. That, yeah. That's the only other beer I've ever heard of using corn in the brewing hmm. process. Uh, what do, do you remember like how the beer turned out? Was it a heavier beer? It was pretty light. It was only like 4 or 5% alcohol. I mean, it was like a lighter... Yeah. Hmm. IPA wheat style kind of beer. Interesting. Wow. I don't. I, I don't sorry about that. I don't. I don't know if I could try a <laughs> beer right. that has other people's saliva in it. I mean, I know it probably all gets boiled out in the brewing process, yeah. but it's like the the beer you briefly mentioned in one other episode, the beard beer from yeah, Rogue. Rogue beard beer. Yeah. Yeah, my, my, that's weird. Well, I mean, it's like that cup of coffee that uh, has to go through an animal, and they pull it out of its excrement, and then they brew That's it. That's true. It's just... That's a thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, the like, the most expensive cup of coffee you can get, too. Yeah. It, the beans are, like, ridiculously expensive. Through an animal. Yep. But the beans aren't apparently aren't as good until they go through the animal. And been, like, partially digested and... What if it goes... You know, does it have to... What kind of animal? I mean, does it, can it be a any? I feel like it's can it like be a, a rodent or a monkey type of thing, but so, it, I thought it was some sort of livestock, but I'm not sure. Can it be a I, human? I don't know. No. Well, I mean, can I, I get paid for it? <laughs> my, I, <laughs> I just, I'm exploring career options here. That would be know. unique, that's for sure. <laughs> Bravo, Brooks. Bravo, fucking O. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So that I mean, I, you said you weren't like huge on porters, but that's pretty, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, well, it's not. Yeah, it, it doesn't really come off as a porter to me. It yes. doesn't really look like one either. It's very, right. it's kind of clear. It's clear, not clear, reddish. But it yeah, does have that reddish look. Not quite as opaque. Hmm. You really have to hold it up to the light to see the reddishness, but it comes through when you really get mm -hmm. get the full spectrum. Well, I think we have an easy transition, by the way, uh, to this day in beer history. Yeah. And it is January 16th. Our headline uh, comes from the year 1920 out of the Munich <coughs> Times. Oh. What could it be this week? <laughs> Hofbrau House is becoming a political hotbed. With the German government still trying to cope with the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, many new political groups are coming together to show why their way will be a better direction for Germany. At the center of it all is the Royal Beer Hall, the Hofbrau House here in uh, Munich. Can't read. <laughs> uh, gone is the raucous beer songs and replaced with rhetoric. 
Last year, a young Russian by the name of Lenin formed the Munich Communist Party and has set up headquarters in the main hall. This year, an army firebrand named Adolf Hitler has formed the National Socialist Program. Uh, in the festival room, he gave a 25-point speech in front of 2,000 people. Next week, Wolfgang Schwarzenegger will give his first speech in the main <laughs> hall for his new political party, the Babes in the Brawn Party. <laughs> With all of the new candidates, many have taken to finding faults. Most citizens don't like that Lenin is not a native German. Hitler has been cri criticized for using the beer hall while not drinking or eating red meat, which is the majority of dishes served in the Hofbrau House. And Schwarzenegger's intellect and speaking ability are likely going to keep him from reaching political office. <laughs> the article then goes on, but... An interesting snapshot into history huh? <laughs> and how it relates to beer. I was really waiting for uh, for a German accent to come out of you on one of those. <laughs> uh, no, they didn't have any quotes that huh. I had to read. So I mean, there's some pretty good quotes in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Hitler not not drinking alcohol what or a, eating red meat. What a what douche. a fucking Nazi. What a fuck. What a yeah. As if, he, as, if, as if he wasn't a bad enough person already. My God. If I could dislike him anymore, I now do. Oh, man. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Does he, does he do CrossFit, too? <laughs> Zumba. Zumba, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Take that, Hitler. We finally got a good joke on him. Yep. Well, guys, did you have a good uh, good week? Good show? Yeah, it was a great week. Absolutely, yeah. Can't complain. I'm here All with right. you guys enjoying some good beer. Can't complain, huh? Yeah. I love this show. And I want to actually, real quick, um, Sam, I want to thank you for coming on and being our guest this week. I want to thank you for having me. I, I, we'll have been you been back looking sometime. forward to this for a long time. <laughs> Maybe even Winterfest, you'll hear his Dawson voice again. Now I'm looking forward to Winterfest. <laughs> you should. It's going to be awesome. Uh, next week, uh, January 23rd, we're going to have uh, a local comedian, Kenneth Rock Armstrong. Kenneth. Yes. All right. And then on uh, January 30th, the day before we travel to Winterfest, we're going to have another local comedian, David Britton, on. That guy was awesome. I saw him do stand up a couple months ago. Hilarious. He oh. is he's fantastic. I every time I get a chance to watch him I do. So uh, yeah, so we got some good shows coming up. I'm really excited. Again, we just found out about Winterfest just hours before the show, so I'm super jacked up about that. So stick with us and uh, drink on. Yeah. Alright. Sitting on my bed in my red pajamas Watching Michigan State take on Indiana And honey, thought you'd like to know I don't mean to be apologizing And I hate wasting time philosophizing Cause baby, I'm a little bit slow Oh, a lot of people catch on to things quicker And maybe I spend too much time with my liquor And I stand still while the others go And I never get jokes until hours later And then I crack up in a crowded elevator Cause baby, I'm a little bit slow